Hi, my name is Arv Modi and I'm an Alexa skill developer. So far, I've developed a few skills and my most recent skill is STEM Party. STEM Party is a skill that allows you to increase your knowledge of math and science. Today, I'll be showing you how to add APL to a fact skill. I'll be using my skills kids advice for this demo. First of all, what is APL? APL stands for Alexa Presentation Language and it's a great way to add engaging visuals to your skill and enhance the user experience. What our screen will show is, it will show a background and image of your choice, and in the middle of the screen, it will show whatever text Alexa is currently speaking. There's a few steps we'll need to do to achieve this goal. First, we'll need to toggle the APL interface in the developer console. Next, we'll need to create an APL layout. Third, we'll need to check, does the user's device have a screen or not? And fourth, if the user's device does have a screen, we'll add an APL directive. Without further ado, let's get started. Alexa skills kit. And now scroll to the skill that you're adding APL to. This to UIS. And so now I'm in my skill. The first thing I want to do is I want to go to interfaces, scroll down to Alexa presentation language, and turn it on. And keep hub landscape small echo show five checked. You can choose if you want to keep it checked or not, but it's Highly recommended, just keep it checked. The more devices, the better. Okay, save the interfaces and then build it. Then once you're done with that, go to display beta. Then here, Amazon gives you lots of different examples of screens so us developers don't have to do lots of work creating our own screens. However, I've actually created my own screen so we don't need to use any of these. Just hit start from scratch. And now we have a black screen because we haven't added anything to our APL yet. It's empty. So now I'm going to leave the link to this code in the description below. But for now, I'm just going to copy this code and APL paste. So now the background I chose is coming up, but the text is not coming in the middle of the screen. Why is this happening? Because in this text element, currently we are giving a variable, a variable that is defined in the code. So if this code was in the code, <laughs> if this code was in the code, <laughs> but like, yeah, if we use this in the code, then it would work. But since we don't have the rest of the code here, it's basically taking it as undefined. So if we were to put some text here, like this is cool advice, then you can see it's coming up exactly the way you wanted. And you'll probably want to change the background. So then you would go to the source and you would host your image to S3, uh, AWS S3. And then you would take the object URL and paste it in this source area. So then that's how you would change that. Okay, so then copy this code and paste it into a file called uh, apldoc.json or something else that's easy to remember. And now here's how I made my folder structure. I created an APL folder with, all, with my index.js, uh, everything else. And then inside that, I created two folders, a data folder and a layouts folder. The layouts folder is for all the screens, all the different screens I have. Like for example, this would go in the layouts tab. The data 
is, for example, let's say I have an APL leaderboard, then maybe I want to keep a list of all the names of all of like the leaderboards competitors in data to use in the APL to like show number one, two, and three. Maybe I would need that. For this, we wouldn't need that, but for like future, it can be helpful. So then paste that in and so now we are done with the developer console. Oh, and one more thing. In the developer console, it's cool because this is just like medium hub, but you can use small hubs, uh, round, large, extra large TV. So if something, if you want to look at all devices, then this is helpful. This is how it show up on different devices. Okay, so now we've created our APL document. Now let's integrate it into the code. So I'll go to index.js and first I'll copy in these lines of code. So first we're checking if APL helper dot supports APL, which we'll be creating in a minute. So if this is true, and what this does is it basically checks, does the user's device have a screen? Because if you send a screen based directive to a device that doesn't have a screen, like an echo dot, it'll throw an error because it doesn't have a screen. It can't do that. So if it doesn't have a screen, it'll just skip this whole thing entirely. But if it does, it'll create this data variable and then it'll add a directive. The type will be an APL render document. The document will be APL doc. Make sure you get the file path right. Token, I'll, I just named mine kids advice token and data sources, leave it as data. And just copy this code in wherever you want your screen to show up. So. I put mine in the get advice intent handler and the yes intent handler. And now there's just one step left. Now we need this file APL helper.js. And this is where we have these two functions. Create data source is where we create variables that we can use in our APL. And supports APL is where we check to see does the user's device have a screen? Is it does it support APL or not? Okay, so now we're nearly done. The last thing we need to do is we just need to add APL helper at the top. Otherwise, it will like it won't work. It'll say APL helper is undefined. Okay, so now we're done. Just one quick tip. If you change a variable name in create data source, like let's say you have a skill called funny jokes, you may you make this funny jokes data current joke, then you have to change that in your APL doc.json. Like mine right now in the text, it says payload.kidsadvicedata.properties.current advice. So if you were to change something here, like funny jokes data.properties current joke, you'd have to change it here too. Otherwise, it won't work. And so that's it. Just to summarize, you added APL by first creating a layout, then putting it and integrating it in your code, adding a directive, creating variables, all sorts of stuff. And we're done. I hope you liked the video. Subscribe to my channel, Awesome Ariv or follow me on Twitter, you can visit my website at awesomearb.com and I can't wait to see you in the next video.